But Terry's going to talk to you about plane angles in a minute. Here's Terry. Okay, this is just educational stuff. Um, if you're into woodwork, you probably got into learning how to sharpen. What I found when I was learning how to sharpen, there's plenty of information on actually how to do it, and there's so many methods, it's not funny. But there was, wasn't a lot around about the principles of uh, sharpening blades. So um, this has come, I came up with these cardboard cutouts just because I kept getting asked different questions about sharp blades and what angle, what's the optimum angle for the bevel on your plane. And, you know, my research told me that it's uh, as acute as possible, so more like that rather than that. Acute as possible, as long as when you're planing or chiseling, the blade edge doesn't chip. So, anyway, people, uh, all sorts of questions came my way, but um, what I did was get on the internet and uh, research some stuff. And uh, through repeated sharpening, you can end up with, um, instead of having a blade nicely sharpened at 30 degrees, right, and just to explain these cardboard cutouts, the, this is just the tip of the blade. Oh, no. I'll just take this blade out. So we're only talking about this last little bit on the end, right? This has blown up probably a thousand times. But what I want to show you is when you freshly sharpen your blade and then plane with it, or chisel for that matter, what happens as it goes from sharp to blunt? because it's very revealing when you blow it up to this sort of size. Uh, and it has the effect, the, we the wearing on your nice sharp edge has an effect on the clearance angle in your plane. And if you don't have any clearance angle, your plane won't cut nicely. So, a couple of things I mentioned earlier on, this fella called Steve Elliott, he uh, did a lot of research into this and he took from a knife maker's um, idea how to measure how sharp a blade is. Right, this is a 15 degree blade, and you can see the point on the 15 degree blade is significantly uh, more pointy than the 50 degree bevel. So he devised this uh, test, which he run, run a piece of string around the blade, and then he'd have a very delicate um, uh, way to measure the force required to cut the string. So it's pretty obvious that this one here is going to cut the string much before this one. And it gave him an, an objective way to assess when a blade was blunt for a start, and also a very objective way to work out what is the optimum angle for planing certain woods. He did his, all his tests on cherry, which is an American, uh, typical American timber, and he came up with 31 degrees as your bevel angle is the optimum angle. So. If you Google Steve Elliott uh, blade test or Steve Elliott wear profiles, you'll find his site and there's some amazing stuff in there. It's all independently done. So let's have a look at two um, blade angles, 30 degrees versus 50 degrees. Now you might ask, how do you get to a 50 degree blade? This, um, if you've got a 30 degree blade and you continually put micro bevels on it, right? to save time, your blade right at the tip, which is where all the action happened, you could end up with a blade quite easily 50 degrees. Or you may even be sharpening your blades at 50 degrees to change your blade pitch. Right, so let's overlay these two cardboard cutouts in the red. Uh, one's a 30 degree, this one, 30 degree and a 50 degree bevel. But from Steve Elliott's website, this is when your blade is considered yeah, blunt. On this one here. Oh, if I, I lay them over the top, you can see they're exactly the same shape at the tip and the black line is the remnant of the sharp edge. So let's quickly look at the 30 degree blade. Right, now you can see from the red end of the red to the tip of the black, that's your usable amount of blade. Now let's quickly look at, uh, we'll overlay our 50 degree blunt blade over our 50 degree sharp blade. Now it doesn't take a, a brain surgeon to work out that the 30 degree bevel 
has so much more usable blade. In actual fact, if you measure it, this 30 degree blade has three times the usable sharp edge than your 50 degree. And that the first bit of your blade is the, the really good bit where you, you get significantly good, uh, better results. So straight away, you can tell that if you, it, and this is one thing that you guys control. When we send a plane out, it'll have a 30 degree bevel, but if you don't resharpen at 30 degrees and it gets to, the, to this point, then you're gonna have trouble getting good results out of your plane. That's whether it's a metal, what doesn't really matter. But if you sharpen, uh, resharpen I should say, to a 30 degree bevel, then you'll never have problems with a sharp blade. Um, just before I come away, the, um, I got my half inch dado plane out and I, I've got a little gadget for measuring the angles on the end and it was actually at 40 degrees. Uh, is it? Yeah, that, uh, my version of that one, which gets a hell of a work out at wood shows and that. I actually took the blade out and measured the tip of the bla that blade and it was actually at 40 degrees. So by being at 40 degrees, I've lost um, one third of my usable sharp edge. If I could just intercede there, uh, Mark, Clement, I just want to check that email. Mate, that's what they call a hollow grind. It's been done on a round wheel like the Tormic and your cutting edge is the bit right at the edge. You might be used to a flat grind, but all yours are hollow, all mine are hollow ground too. So it's perfectly normal, but you just got to follow that profile or as Terry just showed you, put a secondary bevel on it for a bit. Yeah, just to explain that a bit further, if I put a hollow in this here, when I'm sharpening, I only have to touch that end and that end on the water stone. So if it's flat ground, you've got to hone away all that metal, right? And that leads me to showing you this. When you go to sharpen, uh, that one over there, if you want, yep. When you go to sharpen, you've got to actually, you've got a ruler, Steve. Oh, yeah. Have a rough one. Have a rough one. <laughs> right. Uh, where's the camera over there? There's See it. that black line? That's the remnant of the sharp blade. So to resharpen that, I'm going to show you what the ruler, you've actually got to go past that sharp, that uh, blunt corner there and take it all off. Right, so if you're hollow ground, you've only got a little bit here and a little bit there to take off. So much more easy to sharpen your blade if it's hollow ground. It's just simply because you've got less metal to remove. Um, all right, so um, it's a no-brainer for me. Keep your blades at 30 degrees. Don't let your blades get too obtuse because you will, will run out of sharp edge very quickly. Right, the next one is any questions on that one? Yeah, That's how long a school, mate. <laughs> Any questions? What have we got? Uh, Thomas on YouTube. I've never had good results with hand planes. Probably a combination of buying cheap and not knowing what you're doing. Uh, mate, yeah, honestly, the second one, and I'm not being derogatory, if you know what you're doing, you can actually get a cheap plane to work. It won't work for long, but it will work. There's a certain quality of steel. Um, you know, if you compare those two, well, as I said, a blunt 30 degree bevel, or sorry, a sharp 30 degree bevel is gonna last three times long as a sharp 50 degree bevel. No matter what steel is in that blade, if I had a the best steel in the world with a 50 degree bevel and the worst steel in the world, I'd still back my 30 degree bevel. How, how does that go? I do mine at 25. And it seems to work. So yeah. should I bring it up to third? Um, do you reckon? Or? Well, remembering that Steve Elliott, he did his um, tests on cherry. Yeah. Right. So when he was road. planing cherry, so this is a bit of cherry here. When he was planing it, if the bevel angle was less than thirty-one, the edge would just chip a little bit. Oh, okay. Right. If he if he made the bevel greater than thirty-one, he wouldn't get as long of uh, uh, the same, he wouldn't get as many lineal feet of planing done if it was above 31 well, That's degrees. it, I might have to change them all to 30. No, not, not what I'm doing well, next weekend. The, it's back to what I originally said, if the optimum angle is as acute as possible, as long as the edge doesn't chip. So if Steve's planting a bit of cedar, Australian red cedar, it's probably not as hard as cherry, 
at 25 degrees if you don't get your edge chipping then stick with it stick with it yeah there's nothing wrong with grinding at 25 but if your edge starts to chip that is the quickest way to blunt your blade so there you go hi alan on youtube <laughs> sorry mate we got involved i missed you but hello welcome to the workshop uh yeah welcome clement hope that fixes it for you thanks terry for all the gold techniques so don't use the secondary bevel then. Well, you see, I, I did. I started out uh, 30 years ago. I never used to use a secondary. Then I started using secondary. And about three months ago, after I saw Terry, that was more than three months ago, it might be six months ago, I saw Terry demonstrate this uh, and talking to the guys at Tormek. I just said, that's it, I'm going back to a primary. And I wasn't here when Terry was doing all of that. But I do know, I don't know if he mentioned it, but I do know if I put a secondary on, it takes me a heck of a lot longer to get that primary bevel back. Yeah, that's right. Whereas if I'm doing the same primary bevel, it generally takes me longer, and it doesn't take long, but it takes me long to actually get the blade and put it into the um, jig on, on the Tormek, or whatever planing system you use, than it does to actually get that edge back. And the beautiful thing is if you're doing it all the same, you just set your machine up and everything's 25 or 30 or 27 and a half or whatever you decide. So there you go. Yeah, a wet wheel Tormac type system. If you set it up at whatever and keep using it, it'll, it'll save you time in sharpening. I don't have anything against micro bevels and I generally I'll just put, I'll sharpen my primary bevel at 30 and just put a little micro bevel, but I only do it once, maybe twice if I'm in a hurry. So it's when you keep putting micro bevels there thinking you're saving time you end up with your blunt 40 50 degree bevel all right th on youtube says this broadcast is perfect asked me about yesterday planning some stuff yesterday <laughs> uh and he's asked uh, can this be posted for future reference yes it will i will take this out and i'll post it on youtube <laughs>